Eddie, good morning to you. Good morning, Governor. So, uh, Mr. Speaker and Mayor, please uh, uh, join us up here, and Senator. Uh, I want to welcome everyone uh, to the beautiful and historic Old State House. Uh, it's exciting to be in this building that represents our state's history. Uh, today, we want to take, talk about our state's future and how we are represented as a state in the halls of Congress. I'm delighted to see uh, Mayor Frank Scott here. Uh, the city of Little Rock has been a good partner in this. Uh, Speaker uh, Matthew Shepard, uh, who helped uh, guide this uh, through the General Assembly. And of course, uh, uh, Senator uh, Dave Wallace, uh, who was the uh, lead sponsor of the legislation, is with us today. Representative Jeff Wardlaw, was the House sponsor and uh, one expressed appreciation to them. Today we are to talk about Arkansas history as it will be shown to the world in our nation's statuary hall in the halls of the U.S. Capitol. That is where three to five million visitors from across the world come see uh, our history in the United States Capitol. In the last 100 years, Arkansas has changed as a state. But the changes that we have seen as a state are not reflected in our nation's capital, and our visitors do not get to see uh, that change in our representation in Arkansas. I recall as a freshman member of Congress, the Speaker of the House hosted dinner for all of the new members of Congress in Statuary Hall, in the candlelight, and as you looked around, you saw history. And can you imagine a new member of Congress being there in Statuary Hall and seeing the statue of Daisy Gatson, Gatson Bates representing the state of Arkansas, or Johnny Cash, and that's what we're, our history is changing. In the near future, we'll be showcasing those changes by replacing the statues of James P. Clark and U.M. Rose with the sculptures of civil rights icon Daisy Bates and music legend Johnny Cash. And I've always said thanks to uh, Dave Wallace and Representative Jeff Wardlaw. I also wanted to acknowledge Secretary Stacy Hurst, who is our host today. Uh, the Secretary of, De of the Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism, who's been really key in helping to raise money, uh, but also to pull all of this together. I also want to thank the National Statuary Hall Steering Committee and the Capital Arts and Grounds Commission, who are overseeing the details of this project. Uh, Shane Broadway serves as chairman of that uh, committee, and you will be hearing from him later. I also wanted to thank uh, my legislative director, Karen Watley, who has uh, taken uh, this uh, leadership role in behalf of my office. Also, the members and leadership of the Foundation for Arkansas Heritage and History, uh, they have agreed to accept donations uh, and account for the donations, uh, which uh, is a great benefit to us. Uh, I want to thank Secretary John Thurston and his team who have helped with the bid proposals and uh, shepherd this project as well. And now to today's announcement. Today I'm reporting that our early fundraising goals have been met and exceeded. Our goal is $1 million for the entire project. Uh, that will cover selecting the best sculptors, completing the work, having approval from the architect of the Capitol, and having a sculpture shipped and placed in the Capitol. Today, we have pledges and cash on hand of over a half million dollars. Very specifically, $510,000 has been raised, and in a moment, I will uh, express thanks to some of those individual donors that have been so generous. Today, I am announcing that we're entering the public phase 
of our fundraising campaign. We want our Kansans of every way to participate in this campaign. We want them, when they go to our nation's capital and they see the representation of our modern history there at our nation's capital, to say, I donated to that. I participated in this. We helped make this happen. We want all our Kansans to have uh, that benefit. Whether it is $5 or $50, we want you to be a part of this historic initiative. I have made calls to major donors, Secretary Hurst has made calls to major donors and others, and even during a pandemic, companies and individuals step up and say, this is important for our state, we want to be a part of it. The lead donors, and let me make sure we emphasize this, the lead donors include Walmart, City of Little Rock, Sony Music, Simmons Bank, Stuart and Kelly Walton, Tyson Family Foundation, and Jordan Gardner, I understand, is here. Thank you, Jordan, for being here and supporting the Tyson Family Foundation for supporting this project. And then Crown uh, Merchandise as well. And we want to thank Murphy USA Charitable Foundation, who has contributed generously, as well as the Murphy Family Foundation. Please give all of those generous lead donors a round of applause. But everyone should have the same joy and opportunity, and that is the reason that uh, we have made it easy for everyone to uh, contribute. You simply go to this website, and you'll be able to make your donation online, whether, again, it's $5, $50, or more. Uh, we welcome contributions of every size in the public phase of this campaign. My goal is to have this completed and install before I finish my time as governor. Now, I know some of you think that's going to be 20 years from now, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, it's, a, it's around the corner, and that sounds like a lot of time when you realize there's two, more than two years left, but there is a lot of work to be done. And I want to now recognize Shane Broadway, the chair of our National Statuary Committee, uh, to uh, make his comments, followed by Charles King, president of the Daisy Bates House Museum Foundation, and again, yesterday was Daisy Bates' 106th birthday. So, uh, happy birthday to her, and uh, Shane Bro. Right. There you are. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Governor. We sincerely appreciate your leadership during this time in our state, and also in helping our committee move this historic project forward. As a former U.S. Capitol tour guide who has walked through Statuary Hall on countless occasions, as a former Speaker of the House who was Speaker of the House when Daisy Bates Day was designated in Arkansas, and who now works for a university system that owns the Johnny Cash Boyhood Home in Dallas, some of my colleagues are here, it is indeed my honor to serve as Chair of the National Statuary Hall steering committee that will assist in placing the statues of Daisy Bates and Johnny Cash in Statuary Hall of the United States Capitol. This is certainly a historic event for our state in that our current statues were placed in the U.S. Capitol nearly a century ago. In this past session, the Arkansas General Assembly under the leadership of Senator Dave Wallace and Representative Jeff Woodlaw, along with Senate and House leadership, and I want it noted that Speaker Shepard is here because both of the honorees were born in his district. And so we thank him for his leadership to set in process, the, uh, the set in motion the process to change who represents our state in this honored hall, where millions of visitors from all around the world will now see and hear the Arkansas story of Daisy Bates and Johnny Cash and how their lives their actions and words impacted people around the world as well as their home state. For the past year, our committee has begun the meticulous process of working in a step-by-step -step fashion with Secretary of State Thurston's office, Kurt, thank you, the architect of the U.S. Capitol, our very supportive congressional delegation, 
visiting with both families on the placement of the statues and the photos that will be used for the artists. Johnny Cash, his statue will be in the Capitol Visitor Center. Daisy Bates, after consulting with the family, Daisy Bates will be across from Rosa Parks and next to Jefferson Davis. A fitting place for a civil rights icon to be in the U.S. Capitol. We've also been talking with other states who have recently gone through this process, developing the process with, for an RFQ and receiving RFQs from artists from all around the country that we are now reviewing, as well as initializing, initializing with Governor Hutchison's leadership and with help from his staff, Karen Watley and Secretary Hurst, to raise the needed funds for our new statues and their placement in the U.S. Capitol. We are excited today to begin this new phase so that the citizens of Arkansas and people from across the country and around the world will have a chance to participate in this historic event and be part of honoring a civil rights icon and the first musician to be chosen to be placed in Statuary Hall. We sincerely appreciate all who have pledged or given to this effort thus far and we look forward to the celebration of the induction of Daisy Bates and Johnny Cash in Statuary Hall. I would now, if you will indulge me, like to read a statement from the family of Johnny Cash. The Cash family is extraordinarily proud that Johnny Cash has been selected as one of two Arkansans whose statues will represent the state in Statuary Hall in the United States Capitol. Our father and brother was fiercely proud of his upbringing in the New Deal era colony of Dias, and he would be deeply moved and honored to know a sculpture of him will forever stand as an Arkansas native son in that great hall. He would have been even more gratified to know that he will share the distinction with civil rights icon Daisy Bates. Our family is tremendously grateful to the sponsors of the bill, Senator Dave Wallace and Representative Jeff Wardlaw, Senate President Pro Tem Jim Hendren and Speaker of the House Matthew Shepard, who worked to bring the bill to completion. Secretary of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism Stacy Hurst, who has organized the fundraising, the enthusiastic members of the Arkansas Congressional Delegation, and of course, Governor Asa Hutchinson, who signed the bill into law. Johnny Cash won many, many awards in his life for his music and for his humanitarian work. He is in several Hall of Fames, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Hall of Fame, to name a few. But there is no hall like the noble one in which his statue will stand. There is no fame close to the prestige of representing one's home state in our nation's capital. The entire Cash family, brother, sister, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces and nephews, are humbled and elated, and we look forward to the day we stand in front of his statue and tell all who will listen, this is a son of Arkansas who traveled the world many times over, but never loved a spot on earth as much as the one he represents in this magnificent place. Signed, Tommy Cash, brother, Joanne Cash, sister, Roseanne Cash, daughter, Kathy Cash, Cindy Cash, and Tara Cash, all daughters, and his son, John Carter Cash. Thank you. Charles? Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Governor Hutchinson. Members of the legislature, uh, Secretary Harris, Mayor Scott, thank each of you for the work that all of you have done to get us here today. On yesterday, Wednesday, November 11th, we celebrated the birthday of the legendary Miss Daisy Lee Gatson Bates. She would have been 106 years old. The Daisy Bates House Museum Foundation, along with the Little Rock Christian Ministerial Alliance, worked throughout the year to keep the Daisy Bates legacy alive and to create and foster 
the spirit of community that Ms. Bates so humbly spent her life in service to. The home is located at 1207 West 28th Street in Little Rock. It is open to the public for tours by appointment. <clears throat> to all of those who are benefactors of Daisy Bates' life of service, and that would be all our Kansans and most peoples of America, we are proud to stand here today, along with the governor of our great state, to proclaim to the world that in statu statutory hall of our great nation, where only a few Americans are enshrined for their service as nation builders, that Daisy Lee Gatson Bates, along with another great Arkansan, Mr. Johnny R. Cash, will stand as a testament throughout time to the belief that access to education is the key to success. It is what the American dream is built upon. Mrs. Bates, along with the Little Rock Nine and their families, boldly and with strong spiritual faith, were willing to sacrifice it all. Yes, including potentially their lives, so that others could live out the dream that this great nation so proudly offers. To some, the legacy of the struggle of 1957 is not known. To others, it is quickly forgotten. As a nation, we must never forget. So the gifts that we ask for today will correctly enshrine the work of two great Americans. Daisy Lee Gatson Bates and Johnny R. Cash will stand proudly in our nation's statutory hall as representatives of the very best Arkansas has offered. Thank you to all the legislators who authored, co-signed, and voted for passage of this honor. Thank you to all those who will give to this honorable cause. Thank you to Mrs. Bates and Mr. Cash for your lives spent in service. We are all better by you. Thank you. With that, we'll wrap it up, but I'd like to have Shane come, and would you describe the discussions with the architect of the Capitol and the families as to where these might be located in Statuary Hall and the Visitor Center? Part of the initial process that we had to, to go through was, number one, working with the families on a photograph uh, to use, and then beginning the process with the architect of the United States Capitol on where they would be located. And so, in relation to where our current statues are and how that process uh, will all work. And so that's where I mentioned a, a, min a moment ago, Johnny Cash, now millions of visitors enter the U.S. Capitol through the Capitol Visitor Center. So everyone as they enter into the United States Capitol for their tour will go by the statue of Johnny Cash because of the, or the current placement of one of our statues. The other was required a, a discussion uh, that we had as a committee uh, in terms of where the other statue was and wanting to make sure with the Daisy Bates Foundation uh, that everyone was in agreement. That was an appropriate place uh, for Daisy Bates to be because the first thing the architect of the Capitol came back to Kurt and the Secretary of State's office and said was that she would be next to Jefferson Davis. And so that can obviously be a sensitive topic to discuss, but after visiting with Charles and the Bates Foundation, they thought of no more appropriate place to be next to than to kind of show it to Jefferson Davis, I guess you would say, but also to be right across from another civil rights icon in Rosa Parks, I think is even more exciting that they will, that you will have two of the most notable women in American history right across from one another. So it's just fitting, it's very exciting. This whole process has been really interesting to be a part of. There's a lot of steps to this that I don't think any of us ever expected we were gonna to have to go through. Uh, in terms of getting these statues eventually there. Uh, and that includes, once the statues are done, getting them there, bringing the other ones out, probably all in the same day. And uh, so there's a lot of things that we still have to go through in terms of this process. But getting to this stage, thanks to the governor's leadership and already from the, from the fundraising goal that we have met, getting them to this stage where the public can now participate, because we've had so many people saying, we want to be a part of this, uh, this is a special day, and I can't wait 
uh, till the day that we have the ceremony at the Capitol. And we're going to do it with Governor Hutchison leading that day. Jane, here's my check. Oh, wow. That's just, that's Man, just, uh, that was quick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Governor. Yeah, that call is good. <laughs>